Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Cynic Alex. And today we're going to do a Dormammu GBR breakdown video. Uh, we're going to run this first one with Doctor Strange through, and I'm just going to play it at normal speed and just give you guys some tips as I'm going along. And then we're going to break the run down with detailed explanation of the different phases and different attacks and different ways of dodging and positioning your character, things to look out for, uh, and sort of like key pieces of information that you're going to need if you want to clear this successfully uh, and you know consistently and it's not as difficult as it seems but it also can be really overwhelming if you just jump into it without any information any knowledge uh, and just try to wing it so yeah I'm just gonna have fun with this first clear here with Dr. Strange though we're using Wong support and uh, Colossus Colossus is nice for Dr. Strange specifically because of the damage reduction. Doctor Strange does take a lot of, well, all uh, characters take a lot of damage in Dormammu GBR, and um, Doctor Strange's heal is not that consistent. So we're on really good pace right now, by the way. If you can clear the first phase, there's two phases of the Dormammu fight. If you can clear the first phase in about a minute or a minute and a half, then you're on really good pace to clear the mission. Okay, we got sent to the Mindless Zone so we're going to kill the mindless one here. Uh, the important thing to remember is don't panic when you get to transferred over, but you should also switch because you've lost all of your buffs. Uh, and when I talk about buffs, I'm talking about the support buffs. In this case, we have Wong's uh, attack buffs and we have Colossus's defense buffs, the blue swords and the red swords. So I switched characters so that we can get them back on Doctor Strange, our main damage dealer. Uh, so this is sort of the first key piece of information that I want to explain briefly before we cover it in greater depth in the sort of second part of this video. Uh, so yeah, just switch characters when someone gets sent to the mindless zone. But yeah, I love this GBR. I have to say I should have probably started off with just gushing about how amazing this piece of content is. It's so, so effing good. Uh, it's crazy. It's actually crazy. Uh, the devs did such a good job, and yeah, I could not be happier with uh, with this content. It's it's just so so good. It's just like it looks so cool. The 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 sound effects are really cool. Um, the look of it is amazing. Everything, literally, literally everything is just absolutely fantastic. Actually, Wong's tier three looks really good in this arena, man. It all just looks so good. I just got knocked out of my fifth skill. I think I still get the buff from the fifth skill, but yeah, that's the uh, the lack of healing in Doctor Strange coming coming to light here. Uh, but yeah, Dormammu, just like all the other GBRs, will cycle now. Oh, I got sent to the mindless zone again. Oof. Oh, I got sent there while this guy was still there. That's so funny. So I didn't know that, but you can you can multiple players can get sent to the mindless zone. I'll just call it the mindless zone. And you can get sent there even after someone else has gotten sent there. Uh, if they're just taking too long and just like shitting the bed uh, damage DPS wise. Probably shouldn't have canceled the fourth skill with Wong. I just don't know how to play Wong very well. Uh, but um, he's PvP build so I'm not really expecting him to be all that insane. Let's go pop off here. Oof. So much damage taken. And that heal just pops once, even though there's three Doctor Stranges, it should be three heals. There's so much going on. I kind of didn't want to use Doctor Strange for this uh, showcase because uh, of the fact that, you know, you can't really see when you pop, especially Doctor Strange's fifth skill, you can't really see what's going on in the arena. Oh, this is one of the coolest parts of uh, this fight. I absolutely love it. This is a, this is a one shot. If you aren't careful, you'll just lose one character. So yeah, this guy had no idea how to handle it, and he lost his character. Uh, one cool thing to note is during that phase, multiple players can stand on the same uh, time circle. So even if you have really bad timing, really bad coordination, really bad everything, you <laughs> just just go to where other players are standing, man. When in, when in doubt, do what the confident player looks like they are doing. You know, that is... Uh, always a good piece of advice in this kind of content if you see a player who just looks really confident in what they're doing just copy them 
just copy, copy them, copy where they're running to, copy where they're going, uh, that sort of thing. Now we need to heal. We sure do. We lost our buffs again. I swear, you lose the buffs so often. Okay. We're going to switch to Wong here. The, losing the buffs is a really good um, justification for bringing more than one DPS. So rather than bringing Colossus, I, I brought him to make sure that this showcase doesn't go wrong. I don't die or whatever. But um, if I had brought in someone else instead of Colossus, some you know blast type that's strong offensive let's say ancient one for example right that probably would have been a pretty good option because then when i switch i would i would still have uh, a good dps to swap over to i'm getting sent to the mindless one zone you also get time frozen when you get sent to the mindless zone so you get interrupted this guy here is like not doing any damage the uh the guy who's running mr sinister oh no it's not mr sinister my phone is so hot i can barely hold it yeah, he's not doing any damage. Oh, none of them are doing any damage. Cool. So, neither is my Wong. That's nice. I just want to go back and then switch to Doctor Strange. There is a bug, I believe. I don't know if they've patched it, but there is a bug where um, you get stuck in the Mindless Zone. Even though you've killed the Mindless One. We're almost done here. So, yeah. This is the fight... I absolutely love it. I cannot say enough good about this fight. The only other thing to note is that the death animation on Dormammu does take about 5 seconds. So if you finish the fight with less than 5, like if you kill him with less than 5 seconds to go, you're actually going to lose, which is a bummer. Uh, and then my probably my biggest piece of advice that I have to give you at the end of the run is use boost points. Never, ever, ever play this. Well, not never, but like... Unless you plan on running it many times in one day uh, and you have people consistently to run it with, you should always use at least, you know, 80 boost points, which is like two bonus uh, reward points uh, on the, the sort of team setup page because you're playing this primarily for the book, right? But you're also playing it for the soul of the foul team. But yeah, you're playing it for the book. So you absolutely want to make sure that you're always bringing boost points. The rest of the rewards I don't really care about. I'm really just interested in those first three rewards and especially those first two. So now that you've seen how it looks, I made it look maybe a little bit easy because I definitely played to my strengths. I understand the fight, the mechanics of the fight. I switched often to bring my buffs back and I used a type advantage character because today uh, Dormammu is combat. So I brought in a blast with Doctor Strange and I have the support of Wong giving me increased damage to villains and Doctor Strange is stacked. Now, let's go ahead, slow down the run. I'm going to turn off the camera and just give you guys, uh, you know, an audio uh, description of what's going on and, and sort of what to do and, and, you know, stuff like that. In this run with Thena, we're going to slow down and explain every single key mechanic and attack that Dormammu does, as well as phase changes and shifts so that you can have as successful a run as possible every single time. So the first one here is a purple line that is indicated and then shown an arrow moving either to the left or to the right. In this case, it's moving to the right. And then Dormammu will spew this iframe ignoring penetrating attack that does very high damage. However, it does high damage as it moves. So as you notice, my Thena is on the outside on the left side. So she takes a little bit of damage. I think she takes one or two ticks of 7,500 and then it's over. You want to always position your character in that way so that they're not moving with the flame. The next attack here always occurs around 40 bars. So when Dormammu has been reduced to 40 bars of health uh, in the first phase, he is going to block off two sections of the fight uh, with purple flames on the ground. And as you can see, my teammates are walking into them and taking continuous damage. There will always be one safe zone that's either in the middle of the arena, near Dormammu, or at the back of the arena, which is where we are now. And then he's going to release five waves of these orbs that has sort of a predictable pattern where you just need to go inside outside on the orbs here in this case we're doing another run with scarlet witch and he blocks off a portion now there's always text that appears that he's going to fire foul teen energy orbs so even if you're playing with characters like dr strange who cover the ground you still have that indication as well as a camera shift 
because the perspective sort of zooms out. So in this case, you can see that the safe zone is in the middle. My teammates had no idea what to do, so they're just getting roasted by damage in the bottom left corner. Meanwhile, I am safely dodging the flame on the ground and then just, you know, doing sort of a zigzag pattern of walking to dodge the orbs as they sort of come in these waves. Now, the good thing about this attack is it only happens once per fight. So you don't have to worry about dodging it again, um, but it's something that you do want to practice. Now, there are some other attacks that Dormammu does, like these red attacks uh, that do not penetrate iframes uh, and do not uh, you know, penetrate your invincibility and immunity. So I'm not going to discuss them too much. Here again is the purple attack with an arrow. In this situation, I was in a bad position with Athena, uh, so I end up getting hit multiple times. Uh, and this can actually lead to your characters dying in some cases. So you don't want to position yourself this way if you can help it. Uh, you want to switch, you know, if uh, you can or just reposition your character before um, things get uh, sort of ugly. Now, right away in the second phase of the Dormammu fight, he's going to send someone to the mindless zone and he's going to strip you of your attack buffs. Now, these attack buffs, these support buffs, are the buffs you're getting from any support characters like Phil Coulson. Well, you can't bring Phil Coulson, but characters like, you know, Wong, Sif, Valkyrie, uh, Mystique, Taskmaster, any of these sort of support buffs that increase and decrease damage to supervillains, those buffs will be gone. And as you can see here, when I switch to Sif, the red and blue sword buffs, which are on the second row to the right, have returned. And then he's going to remove the buffs again, here, he's removed all of my buffs, but now when I switch to Thena, the buffs are back. This is a really key point of the fight because it can slow down your damage exponentially if you don't pay attention to it. We're going to rush through some of the other uh, attacks here and some of the other patterns that you've sort of seen repeated, but this switching whenever someone is sent to the mindless zone is absolutely key. Now here, we're going to see another shift. Uh, this is around 20 bars in the second phase, so we have the 40 bars in the first phase and 20 bars in the second phase where the camera is going to shift backwards and sort of up and Dormammu is going to lift up his hands. This is a one-shot mechanic where you need to hide, you need to position yourself on top of one of the three green circles. As you can see here, two of my teammates position themselves inside the same circle. That's fine. All three characters, all three teammates can be in the same circle. As long as you're in the circle, you will be protected by Doctor Strange's Time Stone, and you will not take any damage. I don't think I need to explain it in too much detail, but if you are not in that circle when that attack happens, your, your character gets one shot. So the only way to avoid it is, of course, to switch characters, but even that is a little bit risky. And with that, we have all of the fight mechanics. So I hope this video has been helpful. I absolutely love the Dormammu GBR. I think this is one of the best pieces of content ever in Marvel Future Fight, so I cannot wait to test it out with more characters and see what future characters can do in this content, and especially future Tier 4s, because I think this is really, really fun, and the fact that we can already clear it with Tier 3s, meaning that it's going to get even easier and faster and more fun with Tier 4s and more enhanced builds as time goes on. So yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think and your runs and your builds and, and you know, any tips and tricks you have that I didn't include. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.